Hey everybody, this is 365 Movies in 365 Days, and my name is Jose, your grateful host. How is everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody is doing fine and wonderful no matter where in the world you currently are at. So in today's show, I kind of want to talk about um, a legendary actor who passed away today. Today was announced that legendary Dutch actor Rutner Hauer had passed away. Now, he hadn't passed away today, I believe. He had passed away, I want to say, last week, but it was only today that it was announced. Now, if you're not familiar with the actor, you probably are, you just don't know it. Now, for most movie fans, he is mostly well known for his role in Blade Runner, but he had also been in The Hitcher, Hobo with a Shotgun, and many, many, many other uh, great Hollywood and Dutch films. Uh, which always brings me back to the fact that he was in one of my favorite 70s movies, Turkish Delight. And to add to that, the other f- movie that I really always enjoyed him in was Soldier of Orange. It's another great uh, Dutch movie. The Ear of the Cancer is another one that should really be more remembered. But today I want to talk about a movie that really resonated with me when I saw it as a as a kid for the first time. And I'm always surprised at how it's been mostly forgotten. And that is Nighthawks. Now, Nighthawks was a 1981 movie uh, with Billy D. Williams and Silver Sister Alone. Well, it should be Silver Alone, then Billy D. Williams, right? Anyways. And it had a premise that today sounds pretty standard, but in 1981 was kind of groundbreaking. Now, it didn't completely take great use of this premise, but it did what it could for 1981 standards. So what is the movie all about? Well, the movie is about two detectives played by Williams and Stallone who become part of a new anti-terrorist squad and who are after a terrorist who sees themselves as a speaker for people who cannot speak for themselves. See, here's the thing. Before this movie, terrorists were always seen as either crazy, lone bombers who were going to blow up for personal reasons or for money. They were never seen as people who had an idea and a a crusade, you could say. You know, they weren't people on a mission to speak for others. They were usually people who were in it for themselves. And so Nighthawks presented terrorists in a new, different light. And I don't think we were ready at that time to hear that message. Even though the movie, like I said, was a success, Modestly, a lot of people didn't like it, and that included the studio, who massively cut down on the movie. The other person who didn't like this was Stallone. See, here's the thing. Howard was, at this point, an unknown in America, at least. He had been in his, you know, in his native countries, a great actor. However, this was his debut for Hollywood Pictures, and he had a great performance. So much so that when the movie was test screened, audiences really resonated with his character. Well, guess who didn't like that? Stallone. And so Stallone had the movie re-edited to include more scenes of him and a little bit less of Howard. And so we go from Howard being a character that we kind of understand his motives to one, well, his motives seem kind of half empty. And Stallone the star and it's a shame because it's a great movie that could have been could have explored a lot more about what the idea because this wasn't just a guy who was ready to bomb and blow things up because he wanted a million dollars or because you know something stupid you know this was a guy who wanted the attention to be put on a subject, a cause, a organization, something that meant more than just one person. And that was unique. I remember watching this movie for the first time in about 19, I think it was about 1987, 88. It was in the late eighties. I know for that. My stepdad, who was a huge Stallone fan, um, would put it on for us any chance he could. And I just gravitated to it. I thought it was a cool movie with lots of great effects. Well, not effects, but stunts, I should say. <laughs> But the person who always drew me in was Howard. His villain was someone who was, he was the star of the movie. Every scene that he was in, you were drawn towards him. You wanted to know more about his character. And even though Stallone did his best to, you know, put the the, the light back on him, 
I don't think he'd work. You still ended up with a character who you could, you couldn't agree with him and you couldn't say, yeah, his motives are a little weird, but you know, he has valid points. No, but you knew he wasn't your typical brain dead villain. He was complex. And that was new. That was completely new. You know, under the old days, that wouldn't have flown. But he was a character who was a little bit more complex. And it made for a better movie. Hauser's going to be remembered for a lot of great things and a lot of great movies like the aforementioned Blade Runner. But I hope, and I really do hope, that there is a little bit of space there for Nighthawks. If you've never seen Nighthawks, this is a great time to pick up this movie because it is a great action movie. In the show notes, I'm going to put where you can find it and how you can get your hands on Nighthawks. It is a great movie, like I said, and I really do recommend. And it's a great tribute to a great actor. Thank you for joining me on 365 Movies in 365 Days, where we look at one movie every single day. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and any other social media platform that you can think of. You can get our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or any other place you get your podcasting fix at. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have a request for a movie you'd like us to look at, let us know. Have a great day, and please take care of each other. It's all we got. Thanks.